Hello underwater friends, in this video I'm going to tell you how to do great underwater wide-angle photography. First we're going to talk about the equipment and which one we can use, then I'm going to talk about composition, then portrait composition, after that I will talk about the basics on how to make great photography, then stroke position, settings, and at the end I will tell you some good tips on how to improve your pictures. And by the way, Bali is reopened, so if you want to come dive with us in proof diving, I put a link in the description. I do trainings on photo or just basic diving and also fun dive. And I help photographers to make the best pictures possible by having a great spotter with them. Okay, first the equipment. For wide angle, we can use everything from action cam to DSLR and mirrorless. So for action cams, you need an action cam GoPro or any equivalent, you need a tray and you need also lights. You cannot use strobe because there is no flash on the camera but lights will help. The angle is wide enough but the problem is the size of the sensor and the fact that it's not very good for high ISO. You can use a compact camera as well, so for this you can use a camera, you want to put a tray as well and it's better if you have two strobes but one would be already not so bad. And then the best setup would be DSLR or mirrorless cameras with a tray as well, but normally it's included in your housing. You will need two strobes, a wide angle lens, minimum 20 millimeters and a dome port. The great things about mirrorless and DSLR cameras is that the autofocus is super fast, so it helps you take pictures and not worry about the focus. Also, the aperture, depending on your lens, is going to be quite small. I mean, the number small, but the opening big. So a lot of light will get in your camera. Same thing with the sensor that's going to be big. For mine, it's a full frame. So lots of light goes into the camera and it makes it much easier to take photography when the conditions are not perfect. For the compact camera, as well as the DSLRs, you can also have a macro setup or a medium angle setup and add a wet lens to it, wet wide angle lens that's going to help you for example if you want to do close focus wide angle. Then you can have a foreground that is super small and sharp, a nudie branch or a small fish or anything and then still a very wide angle for the rest of the shot. One of the important things is to try to get your setup to be neutrally buoyant. Normally, if you let go your housing, it should float, not go up or down, and actually even look straight and like this. It's much easier to take your pictures and you don't need to worry about lifting your camera or your camera going up. So for the composition, you want to think about telling a story. It's always important. So what is your subject? What does it mean? Why do you have a foreground? Why do you have a background? And stuff like this. So that's the most important thing. Think about the foreground. For example, if you have a gorgonian, a fish, a coral, make sure that it's big enough and lit properly. Because if it's too small in the picture, the picture is not going to be balanced well. The background will be lit with the ambient light. You don't want your strobe to lit the back. It's impossible, it's going to be too far. So later on, I will explain to you how to get a good color of the water and how to make nice shots. Also, in between that, you want a subject that can be fish, can be human or anything, turtle or whatever, that is going to make your shot more interesting. Make sure your image is balanced and that there is enough contrast. One of the very important things is that you want to shoot upward. Like that you have a blue water as a background and your subject is going to be nice. You want to use diagonals. Actually, diagonals can be used in a wreck or if you want to shoot kelp or things like this and you want to have a nice orientation of the lines to make the picture look okay. Leading lines is also an important thing. It's good to have a line that shows a subject. Like this, your eyes will be drawn to the subject and it's going to be more interesting and it's going to punch more. One of the important things for composition is also the rule of third. So you want to cut your image in nine rectangles and most of the time you want to try to put the important points on the intersection of those lines. When shooting humans or big animals, it's also important to leave them space in front of them. So in the direction where they're looking, you want to have more space than behind them. If you want to shoot portrait, you have to reposition your strobes because your strobes 
otherwise would be on top and bottom. So by repositioning them, you want them to be on the left and right to lead your subject properly. In the foreground, you want, for example, to have corals or an animal, big animal, that will be in the bottom of the picture. In the middle, most of the time, you will have blue water with animals or not. And then on top, you will have sunburst. That will make the most colorful picture. But very important, all of those composition rules are just rules and they're also meant to be broken. And many times, the best picture will be using some of them, but of course, not all of them. For the strobe position, you want your strobes to be close to your camera if you want to shoot, for example, close focus wide angle, or if your subject, your foreground is close to you. And if you shoot a big animal, for example, you want your strobes to be further away. But all of the time, you want them to be facing out. Like this, you don't have problem with backscatter. The strobes are here to lit the foreground, like the coral, gorgonian, or whatever that you have in front. And you want to adjust your settings to make sure it's lit properly and also the position. The best way to do that is to do test shots and make sure that your foreground is lit properly. The background and the water actually will not really be lit by the light because anyway, it won't be powerful enough to lit it. For the settings, normally I use F8, 1 over 25 for the speed and 100 for the ISO. But this can be changed and adjusted depending on the day. Once again, you want to try, see how it goes, and then you're good at least for the location you are right now and the angle you want to take this picture. If you want to take close focus or a sunburst, you may want to have an aperture smaller, meaning a bigger F number, like F11 or even F18, like this, the sunburst is gonna be nicer and also your foreground and your background will be sharper than it would be otherwise. So you don't want anything to be really blurry, so you put a bigger F number. On the opposite, if you want to shoot something that is a big animal or a school of fish, then you want an aperture to be bigger, a smaller F number, like this, only your subject is gonna be sharp because that's what is the most important and the rest may be a little bit blurry, but it's not a problem. For the white balance, most of the time, I will recommend you to have 5000 Kelvin as a white balance, because like this, your water is going to have a nice color. But it depends if the water is a little bit green, or if there is not enough light, or if the conditions are a little bit different, then you may change it. Once again, all of this needs to be adjusted depending on your picture. So don't hesitate, take a couple of pictures, review it, and then take some more with the better settings. So the best way to improve is to do it step by step. So first, you're gonna to try to take pictures with no strobes. You want to take the water mainly and get it with a nice color. Then you may add the sunburst and see the best settings to have nice sun rays and to make it very beautiful. After, you may add also humans or animals that will be shadows and you want them to be very dark, like this, the contrast will be very nice with the blue of the water, even more if you have the sunburst. Then you want to try to use your strobes and get the foreground nicely lit. Like this, you will have a very nice color, for example, an orange gorgonian or nice corals in the foreground, and your background will be as well super nice. And then, of course, you combine everything and your picture is gonna be the best you can do. And now a few more advice, but it's more common sense. Plan your shoot, plan what you want to take as a picture. Find a good location where the background is nice, where everything is beautiful, and then get your friend diver to pass by or wait for the animal to come. And then when you take your shot, it's gonna be perfect. Don't follow the fish. They will just swim away and you're only gonna get tails. And even the location is not gonna be nice. So actually your picture is not gonna be very interesting. Be patient, same thing. You find a good location, you're ready, something will come, something will happen, and then it's gonna be perfect. You want to anticipate also, meaning that if you know that you want to film manta rays, for example, or sharks, well, they may have a pattern. They may swim always in the same location, always come back like a manta ray, will do an ellipse and will eventually come back. Find your spot, even swim to it, and then get ready for when the animal comes, and like this, you will have the best shot. 
of course, the more you know the animal, the easier it's going to be to make the good picture. But anyway, the two main things are, first, don't shoot down. It's rarely nice. Shoot looking up and make test shots. If you make your test shot, you see that the frame is super nice. When something will come, that's going to be the shot. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. If it was the case, don't hesitate to put a thumbs up. And you can also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified with new videos. And up there, I put a video where I tell you how to correct your pictures. Bye bye. Happy bubbles.